Yikes. Oh no. Oh, I really want to catch this one. What is it? What is it? At the end of my last video, I showed you how I had landed this big snapper. Then the footwells of the jet ski filling up with water unexpectedly as it was in very calm conditions. And how I nearly capsized the jet ski. So in this video, I will show you all the events leading up to this near capsize. What I was thinking during this whole event, and what safety equipment I have on me, and what safety equipment I recommend you to have for jet ski fishing. I'm making this video so you don't get caught out like I did. These tips aren't just for jet ski fishing, but for all vessels, especially small ones like kayaks and dinghies. After the fish was landed, and I can see both footwells are very full, I decide to move the ski forward a bit to empty out the footwells. The net caught the rod and it goes into the water. Luckily it's tethered and the tether caught around the net too, so the reel never touched the water. I don't want to waste time here, so I start the ski and move forward and all the water empties out the back. At this point, I still want to take some photos while holding the fish, so I get the lip grippers out to secure the fish. But you can see and hear the water filling up the footwells quickly. So once again, I start the ski and move. I think I know something is wrong at this stage, but not sure what. So you can see me looking around the back of the ski. And that's when I notice the back left hatch is slightly open and letting water in. the ski moving and I now know there's a situation. I know if the ski keeps filling up with water it'll be eventually sink with me on it. And here you can hear for the first time I quietly swear. In the rush of things I unhook the fish to put it into the chaliba. I should have just released it and focused on safety here. With the wasted time of putting the fish in the chili bin and leaning to the back left to see if I could close the hatch, this brought me very close to sinking the back of the jet ski. I think I only just managed to get my weight back to the front in time and I got slightly tangled in the braid too. It was lucky the ski was on the whole time here, due to me having an extended jet ski key uh, on the extended kill cord. At this location, I am 17 kilometers from my place of launch, and I'm thinking the ski could sink at any moment now, so I was considering two options. There was a launch that anchored up about 800 meters north of me while I was fighting the fish. Or well, the second option is I could head to a beach on Rikino, where I thought was about 2 kilometers away. It was a tough decision at the time. Go somewhere closer like the launch, but then I thought there wasn't much I could do to save the ski from sinking at the launch, so I decided to head to Rikino. I want to use this opportunity to talk about the safety equipment to have on a jet ski. First priority is always have your life jacket on. And I always do this, whether it's jet ski or boat. Things can happen so quickly, and there really isn't enough time to put a life jacket on once you're in the water already. 
The second thing to have is two forms of waterproof communication. I have my mobile phone in a floating waterproof case and a personal locator beacon, or PLB for short. A marine radio is also recommended here. And if you have space, have a flare close by. I also have a knife sheathed in my life jacket in case I need to cut a rope in an emergency. I highly recommend you to have the above on you at all times when out jet ski fishing. As I was moving along, I wanted to double check if the beach I had in mind was on the side of the island I was heading towards. I didn't want to end up on a cliff face side. So using my free left hand, I got out my phone and started the Navionics map. It was good to see I was heading to the right spot. While I was still occupied looking at the map, the ski begins to pick up speed and I'm gradually planing along at 35 kilometers an hour. This is a great relief for me as it means I can get to the island quicker. The reason the ski started planing is because the weight of the water that was all at the back has spread to the middle of the ski and with the ski more balanced it was able to lift out a bit and plane along the surface. With the improved speed, I felt that if I could keep the ski at this speed, and with the back hatch out of the water, there wouldn't be more water entering the ski. So I decided to make the 17 km trip back to the boat ramp. The conditions felt calm enough to do this. During the trip back, I did slow down once to pick up my sunglasses, which were about to fall off the back of the ski. And once again, it took a bit of time to get the ski planing again. One of my worries at this point was whether I had enough fuel to get back. I kept my eye on the fuel gauge for those last 20 minutes. With the ski carrying extra weight of the water, it does consume more fuel, so a good lesson here is to always have a full tank of gas before heading out fishing. You never know when you might need all of it. During the bumpy ride, because the ski was porpoising quite a lot, the GoPro mount detached. Luckily it was tethered onto the ski. And basically I always have my rods and my GoPros and expensive things uh, connected to the ski via tether. After the 20 minutes, I safely arrived back to the boat ramp. Here I am able to finally close the open hatch. The ski was still heavy and sitting low in the water. I secure it to the boat ramp and I'm thinking whether the ski will sink at the ramp or not while I went to get the car. I stand back and watch the ski for a few minutes to make sure it's stable before I went to get the car and trailer. Quite a bit of water. Look here, it's still wet. Want to drain it. Open the bones. This will take a while to get all the water up. And the water is really hot. Yeah, that's scalding. <laughs> really hot. Well, once all the water's out, take it home, wash it out. Okay, so I'm back home now. Things got incredibly hectic. 
after landing that snapper. The ski is taking on water. Uh, I know, I know basically what happened. I'll show you in a moment. But um, yeah, basically the, the ski was filling up with water. Uh, what I noticed, the footwells just keep filling up. So I noticed the back was really heavy. So I kind of picked up something was wrong pretty quickly and stopped mucking around with the fish since I wanted to take photos of it. So yeah, I, uh, at that moment I was just thinking if I go to the closest boat to ask for help or uh, drive to the closest island which was Rikino and I was basically just driving to the closest island. Couldn't really go at much speed, I was hovering between 10 to 15 kilometers an hour and then um, when the weight balanced, so you know the water inside the ski uh, moved to the front a bit, balanced back out, the ski started planing and I could pick up speed. And then I was going at about 30, 35 kilometers an hour. So then I decided I'll just drive all the way back to Takapuna. I thought it was safe enough to do so. And I was basically just keeping watch of the back to see if any more water was flowing in. I'll show you what, what went wrong. So the uh, older sea -dews, they have these hatches at the back and um, so on the right side uh, is the access to the battery, the left side doesn't really access too much but I think pretty much what happened was I forgot to lock it when I left the house this morning and then um, after I caught that fish must have been the weight of this pushing down and popped it open like that. So I basically just stayed open like that and uh, started filling up water. You can see how much water came in. I've basically driven home with the bungs open and it's still dripping water. And this water's really hot. So yeah, I couldn't really turn around to close it back up. I just left it open and then just drove home. Here's the inside of the ski. It's just a little bit of water left, it's all draining out. And then, uh, yeah, I'll give it a real good rinse. And it should be okay. So yeah, I'm all good. Cheers for watching. And uh, if you're new to the channel, click the subscribe button and uh, you can keep watching all my fishing adventures with uh, Jigging, slow pitch jigging, soft baiting, super light jigging, and all of that off my uh, jet ski or the boat. Thanks for watching, guys.